God is awesome. 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 Our God. Isn't it good to be able to call him your God? You know, there are many today who are, you know, aren't able to do so. But we are able to say that he is our God and he is truly awesome and will continue to be awesome in our lives. We thank God once again for the opportunity to bring you the word of God. Thank the First Lady and Pastor Hare for each opportunity that we're given and we try to make the best. No, we don't try. We make the best of each opportunity. We're living in a very festive time of the year this season, the Christmas season, and you know, we are preparing and doing a lot of different things. But I don't want us to forget, you know, uh, and I hate to use the adage, but we will, the reason for the season. Because there is a reason. Whether people act like they are aware of it or not, deep down inside of every individual who God created knows that the child that was born and the son was given was because of God's love for us. So I want to talk to you today from a very simple thought, but I got a few questions I want to pose to you. And uh, here's number one. What makes a certain expression or proverb or saying seem to live beyond the first time it was uttered or the first time it was shared with us? Number two, what do or why do some sayings get passed down from one generation to another generation? Number three, what makes these expressions culturally acceptable? What makes some expressions uh, able to pass across cultural and linguistic lines or boundaries? There are some sayings that just, uh, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're Italian, uh, American, African, whatever, there are expressions that, are, that cross those lines. Well, one reason that some expressions pass the test of time is that they relay wisdom from the past that can be applied to our lives today. These expressions, they tell us something true about ourselves, something true about others, and something true about the world we live in. These expressions, they communicate lessons that are worth sharing. You've all heard it said that if you can't run with the big dogs, what's the rest of it? Stay on the porch. Yeah. If you can't take the heat, stay out, stay out the kitchen. Passed on from generation to generation. Others are fortune favors the brave. Consider this one. He who has a why to live can almost or can bear almost any how. If you know the why, you can bear almost any how. And, and this one here. <laughs> give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat forever. And I believe that there's one expression there's one expression that seems to have taken up residence in the mind of most of us. And I know you've heard this one before, and this will be our thought for today. Big things come in small packages. Big things come in small packages. And I would like for you to uh, uh, consider this as we share the word of God with you today coming from Isaiah chapter 9, and we're going to look at verses 6 and 7, then we'll look at Isaiah 7, 14, a verse there, chapter 7, verse 14, and then we're going to go back and look at uh, Genesis 3, 15, all right? So first of all, Isaiah 9, chapter 6, I mean, excuse me, chapter 9, Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, where it is written, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a small thing. 
Unto us a son is given. A big thing. And the government, a bigger thing, will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government, an even bigger thing, his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, as it says in verse 7, and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The word of God says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This child that would be born was shared with us also in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Look at what it says here. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Isaiah talking to uh, King Ahaz here after King Isaiah had passed on. He says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. You see, this big thing that would come in a small package was also shared with us in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when God was speaking to Satan. He says here, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed, the unbelievers are the seed of Satan. And her seed, which would come, which would be the son, the child that was born and the son that was given. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You see, from the very beginning, ladies and gentlemen, from the very beginning, God had a big thing in a small package that would be the savior of the world. God was thinking about you and I from the beginning. From the beginning, God had something big in store for you and I. Many of you this year will get some gifts. Don't judge what's in the box based on the size of the box. Because big things, see, come in small packages. Back to Isaiah 9, uh, he says that, he says here that he would be wonderful, his name would be wonderful because Jesus had to be born as a child to come to us. And at the same time, at the same time, he was the son that would be given for us. See, for unto us a child was born, a son was given. The son was hidden in the child, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. He was thinking about you. That is a wonderful thing. See, he's wonderful. He's exceptional. He's distinguished. He's without peer. Isaiah also shared with us that his name would be Counselor. He gives good advice. Since you've been in a relationship with Jesus Christ, he has offered you some great advice. The question is, have we taken his advice? He is the wonderful counselor. He's wonderful and he is the counselor. This is the child, see, that was born. This is the son that was given. This is the big thing in a small package. It says here that he would be the mighty God, see, who would bruise the head of Satan. You see, taking, what he did was he was taking back the dominion that God gave to you and I, that Adam gave up in the garden. This child that was born, the son that was given, you see, came to the earth to restore us back to God, to reconcile us back to God. Big things come in small packages, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, yes. Don't despise. See, the beginning of small things. Don't, don't despise that. The children that are, are, are in the world today, many of us look at them right where they are. And we pronounce something on them. 
But in that child that may be discouraged at this point, in that child that may be causing a bunch of drama, there's a big thing in that child. Yes, there's a, but we have to do our part. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, big things come in small packages. Isaiah says that he is our everlasting father. You see, who will eternally care for us? Who will discipline us? He is timeless. He is God our father. See, he is God our father. Isaiah also said that he would be called the prince of peace who ushers in the peace that the world can not give. The peace of God that flows from the inside out. You see, that child that was born, that son that was given, is the peace that you need today. It's the peace that you need. During this time of the year, it's probably, out of all the other times and seasons that we have, this time of the year, as far as families are concerned, there's probably, probably more division than ever that comes to our minds because families aren't together. And those that do come together talk about the ones who ain't present. When the believer in the family should be bringing peace because the child that was born, the son that was given, was for that cause for you and I see to to usher in the peace of God in any and every situation our family shouldn't be so divided right now because of the child that was born because of the son that was given and the word of God tells us that the government would rest upon his shoulders that the kingdom rule the government of the kingdom because this is what this son was bringing this is what this child was bringing to the world restoring things so that you and i could live on earth we could live the kingdom life here on earth and be able to share that with others not just doing this time of the year but every day of the week every day of the week big things come in small packages. So this year, this Christmas, open your gift. So open your gift. Open your gift. Love your gift. Spend time with your gift. I'm not talking about that material gift. I'm talking about the child that was born, the son that was given, who grew to be the man named Jesus, who went to the cross of Calvary, who died and rose again for you and I, that we would be in a position to remind the world of why this time of the season is so important, that each one of us have the opportunity to share with someone during this season the reason that we are here. He's the wonderful He's the counselor. He's the mighty God. He's our everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Share him with someone this Christmas. Start today. And as we come up to Christmas Day, be able to celebrate it in such a way with those who you may have had some division with but because the prince of peace you've allowed him to manifest himself through you and the peace of god settled all unfinished business that's the power that you and i have because of this child that was born because of this son that was given for us big things come in small packages, this child had everything you and I needed when he was born. He had it before the world began because God shared with us in the beginning. See, he created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the 
space of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Then God said, the word spoke. That was this child who had not come at that particular time in this physical form. But God had a plan. God had a plan. That's why he said in John, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. The word was God. That was this child who had not come yet in physical form. Lord have mercy. Do you really understand what we have? What we have access to? This time of the year, this time of the year should be one of the greatest times for the believer. Because we can tell the story. We can tell the story and heal the land. You and I can. And we can do this together. Amen? Big things come in small packages. And God loved you so much that he packaged a gift for you before you even got here. Before you even, he, before you even got here, he had something for you. And all that you and I have to do is receive it. And this is how we share the gospel with others. We show them our lives. We show them how we live. We show them that we too have issues. We too have things that we are concerned about. We too have struggles. But because of the child that was born, because of the son that was given, we have an everlasting father who cares for us, who provides for us, and who loves us in spite of everything. God bless you this morning. Heaven smile upon you. May you continue to keep on keeping on. And remember, God loves you. If there are any out of the ark of safety and you would like to give your life to Christ, you would like to accept him as your Lord and Savior, you might sit right where you are and say, God, forgive me of my sins. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my Savior. Then ask God to share with you his will for your life, that you might glorify his name here on the earth.